think it's always great that when you're talking to someone you kind of do know who you're talking to um, because there is other content like I've been preparing and I'm just like okay at least let people know who they're talking to hello guys and welcome to my channel um, if you're back for the second time like welcome back and thank you for subscribing and just showing your support and um, if you're here for the first time don't be shy baby girl don't be shy baby boy um, <laughs> hit the subscribe button um, and if you like what I'll have for you today then you can like and share so I've decided to ask some people a few questions um, with regards to what they would like to actually get to know about me. But yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Trying an uncut version <laughs> of me. And I just wanna say thank you to everybody that's forwarded their questions to me. And yeah, first question was, how do you keep yourself motivated? I think, uh, uh, and I've seen this in, in some of the questions or how people interact with me the assumption is that I'm always constantly motivated ready to go and don't do and I also have like very tough days too, tough weeks tough months um, and it's very possible for me to struggle to get out of bed um, on some days and some occasions so I'm not always motivated motivation is a feeling um, and it's, it's a feeling that comes and goes like every other feeling like happiness like sadness um, and I think that There's a lot more work in terms of commitment uh, Usually it's just like you deadline and you have to chase that deadline um, But I think something that really keeps you going or keeps you committed is when you actually set deadlines for yourself And I don't think we do that enough. I personally don't do it enough, but I also do um, watch a lot of like um, personal mastery read a lot of personal mastery and also just talking to good people as well I think that also helps with keeping me motivated number two <laughs> number two what are your favorite reads and why um so my favorite read is actually surprisingly quite a, a chick flicky book um and it is by john green uh the fault in our stars and i think people will always think like oh you probably read like uh like certain type of content or whatever but i absolutely love that book um i i remember i was even reading it and i was like i even closed the book at some stage and i cried and whatever whatever um but i think what that book did is it kind of uh, helped me understand the type of person that i want to be and the considerations that i want to have in my life so there's the whole thing of of tra trading 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 lightly <laughs> Yeah, English. Um, trading lightly in people's lives, right? Um, and and it's also about consciousness of how you choose to exist in people's lives, in people's lives, and also how you allow yourself to exist in your own life. So choosing your own environments. I think the love story itself, and and how and how softly they want to, want to exist in each other's lives. Um, with the with the goal of making things better for each other um really is a theme of something that i i want how i want to exist in in people's lives and how i would like people to exist in mine so that was a very good read for me um another question how have i grown to be so resilient and my support system is amazing like I know I can call at least one person, two people, three people, um, whenever I start to have self doubt or whenever I need someone to sort of, to sort of pull me out of something. And I never, I never necessarily grew up knowing that that you can also rely on people, um, in as much as you would like people to rely on you. So that helps you with resilience. Um, it, it helps you because these are people that know you and whenever you've forgotten who you are um, and how amazing you are, they're very quick to chip in and, and let you know that, like, I mean, you've done everything, you've done anything. Um, so you can definitely do this as well. I think I've had a very, um, I won't say it's a complex life because it's, it's fitting for me, but 
I think I've had a lot of adversity and, and different experiences to others in my life and, and still my life like came out good. Um, sometimes it hurts and, and like sometimes life sucks. And like for me, just knowing that it always gets better um, assists me with, with persevering and being resilient when, it, when it's not favorable. Okay, I think you show up for yourself 100% most of the time. How do you maintain your discipline? I don't think that I show up for myself 100% of the time, but I really do try. So one thing I've definitely learned, or one thing that, that has, has become, it's like a weird, it's a small thing and a small revelation. And like I, I, people speak about it all the time, but it's not the same, like when you get it, you get it. That like every day is an opportunity to start again right so yesterday you didn't show up for yourself today when the alarm goes off at whatever time you have the opportunity to rewrite yesterday so not necessarily rewrite yesterday but to because when you end that day you feel like you feel unaccomplished right but the next day when you wake up and you accomplish everything on your to-do list yesterday's feeling I mean, becomes insignificant because yesterday I didn't show up today I did show up and and that's what's important and also the whole thing of I learned this um, through when I started running a big myth that people um, I think it's it's a myth that we all keep in our in our heads is that in order to go far or in order to make progress you must constantly be moving you can't ever stop you can't ever so what what I used to um, do when I used to run well, I definitely need to go back and do that is that I started realizing that the, the reason why we think we can't run 10 kilometers is because we think everybody speeds through 10 kilometers and at the end they're still energized and that's when they, that's why they can say they've run 10 kilometers but when you're on the road and you're running your 10 kilometers like you run your 10 kilometers where you get tired you slow down or you walk a little bit and then you start again and you run and whatever and it's it's such an important thing that when we think of how other people achieve things, we think they do things like in ways that are are like a huge miracle. Uh, but the reality is that at some stages you can run and sprint as fast as you can. Some stages at those uphills, you're allowed to take your time and walk a bit. Um, and I mean, at the end of the day, you'll make those 10 kilometers, 21 kilometers, uh, a marathon. I need to remind myself. <laughs> but definitely, I think that's that that for me um, has helped me show up for myself and maintain discipline. Discipline is not like a constant go, go, go. A big part of discipline is being nice to yourself, being kind to yourself and accepting that you're not a machine. Um, but you can show up more often than you don't. At what age did you decide to give it your all and keep keep at it? Oh, I must still reach that stage. <laughs> I must still reach that stage. Um, but I can't say that I don't give things my all. Like, I, I really do try. I can't say there's a specific age. Life is so long. Like, this could be the best I'll ever do. Or it can be the absolute worst, hoping that it is the absolute worst that I'll ever be. Um, and this can be, for me, it can feel like I'm doing everything now, but it can actually be the very least. Because when you stretch yourself, you really see like uh, new capabilities of what you can do. And, oh, <laughs> what's my opinion about pineapple on pizza? Can sour and savory, please, like like can we just keep those apart like i i know people say pineapples are sweet like sweet and savory i don't know man just la mix don't do it like it doesn't belong please do my goals ever give me anxiety oh yes all the time um and the reason why i think i've i've started experiencing it is because i've started to dream a little past what what's what's possible or what I perceive to be possible. So now that my dreams are starting to become more than just surviving, um, that they're becoming like being that, the dream woman that I want to be um, in all spheres of my life, then it starts to add a bit of anxiety. Like, ooh, uh, a spicy one. 
how do I deal with heartbreak? Oh, between oh, sana loam, oh, la. <laughs> oh, oh, I mean, I experience everything. Yeah, I experience I own everything. Um, I know, like my typical one is like, we'll break up, and then I'll be like, okay, and then. Like, I'll be in denial about how I felt about you, so I don't even care, like, oh, whatever. It's, I mean, it's immediate defense. And then, and then, and then, when I start to, to get back into being me, I get, then it's the emotions. Like, oh, maybe, like, things will work out again, or whatever. Like, oh, whatever. Mm, there's so many people in the universe. So many fish in the sea. Oh, oh, oh. Then I started to feel like, but that's my fish. <laughs> And so I think the long and short is that I cry like a mofo and uh, then I deal with the fact that I really like this person and I deal with the fact that it hurts and that Umdu must move and you must commit to it. So that's how I deal with it. Not easy. Sounds easy. Sometimes you're crying at 3 a.m. outside McDonald's for Ino Azazio. But, <laughs> but yeah, we move. We soldier on. Oh, but most importantly with heartbreak is being honest with yourself about how you feel. That helps. Because then you can deal with it. Next, what's my favorite choice in alcohol? Because I'm not a person that's really big on favorites, especially when it comes now to drinks. Um, I actually really, I'm joking. I actually really like wine. I like red wine, I like white wine, I like rosé. I think my only restriction with wine is that I'm not a fan of sweet wine. Um, no. Do you shut down when you are facing a crisis? Uh, I mean, I, sometimes I do shut down. Um, uh, so usually I think my support system also comes in here. So sometimes I, I, I really just pick up the phone and call. Uh, the important people that need to remind me of who I am um, and it's usually the people that that love me and are honest with me and are willing to push me so I usually just pick up the phone and call um, and sometimes I just kind of work through it by myself like I let myself feel the emotion and then I make a decision of but okay now what must happen um, and you work through it like I think I think immediately you can shut down but it's not an indefinite thing like you never shut like I never shut down let me say um, fully completely it's sometimes just a timing thing you just need more time to sort of deal or think about it and then and then you move three things I simply can't live without it has to be my cell phone because I spend a lot of time alone and it's like my main contact with people whether it's people i love or people like it's just my main contact with people i need my cell phone um number two would be people that i love right so i can't like it might not necessarily be the same it won't necessarily be like the same cohort of people but at all times although i, I genuinely wish it is but like I just need to have the people that I love. What that composition looks like is 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 something else. Cause what really does drive me or or really makes me like believe in life is the ability to love others and the ability to be loved. So I really need people that I love. Um, and number three, what else can't I live without? I can't live without. I can't live without God and, 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 and spirituality. And the reason why I say this, I don't need a reason to say it, but like, I, I genuinely can't live without, without God or having someone or something to say thank you to. You can articulate yourself really well. Is it something that you learn to do? if so how so firstly actually before i even go into that thank you so much for that compliment um yeah so i think it's 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 also about like i i 
often watch how people speak or how they how they how they present themselves and whatever and so for me i'm a huge copycat like i'm a big copycat because like why go create things when you can just be around people and copy but obviously not like plagiarism or things like that i'm just talking about learning from others and whatnot so i always like pick up a hint or two or a tip or two and then i try to add that to my life um and yeah so that's really helped and i think building confidence um or having a bit of confidence in what you say um be it that means you have to do a bit more research or whatever i think it it assists with you being able to articulate yourself i think confidence plays a very big role um in people articulating themselves on to the last one um so why did i start a youtube channel What's it going to be about? Darling, can you not see this face? It's going to be about Ujonga Omuso looking at this face. No, I'm joking. So for me, um, in terms of, of a YouTube channel, um, so there are a lot of things I'm extremely interested in. in. I think the first time I came across a, a YouTube channel was like years ago where this lady was uh, doing a topic of of big talk or talking big or whatever so what she'd do is i think she was even on wall street at the time where she's walking around and she's not asking like people that small talk sort of thing of like how are you doing she'll like walk up to someone and she'll say like what's the one thing you'll regret if you die today and that was the basis of like her conversations with people it was like on the important things um so for me i do like to have a lot of big talk um with people and it's a across various topics so for me i thought oh this is such a great opportunity right to engage with people and have people engage with you because when you make yourself vulnerable what it does is it allows people to engage you on topics that in that interest them as well so for me i think that's a big thing with my youtube channel is okay guys so that is the end of our questions um thank you so so much for everybody that engaged and sent me a few questions if there's any further questions that you might have for me with regards to who is this girl um and if there's anything that you'd like to sort of like engage on or just comment on just comment below find me on social media on my twitter and instagram q underscore mtini and if you really like this video let's go look give it a thumbs up um and share it with people and um also don't forget to subscribe until next time guys i look forward to having more of these conversations with you bye